Hey everybody, uh, welcome to today's mini lecture. This mini lecture will be about Spanish Texas and the United States and the way everything worked out between them. Uh, basically uh, how the Spanish dealt with the new burgeoning uh, country that just appeared on their imperial borders. Spanish Texas provided cattle exports to Louisiana during the American Revolution and not a whole lot else. Despite Spain's late decision to support the United States, they uh, did not really contribute that much. The independent U.S. stirred anxiety in the new Spain about its border security and about American hunger for Western lands. Treaties between the U.S. and Spain addressed these outcomes, or at least these concerns, into the 1780s. And the U.S. purchased Louisiana in 1803 and the emergence of the Mexican Revolutionary Activity in 1810. Uh, threatened Spain's hold on Texas in the first two decades of the new century with Mexican independence in 1821, Texas no longer remained within Spain's American empire. Today I'll be talking about Spanish Texas and the new country of the United States. Now Spain kept a kind of a concerned eye on this new border that they had here. The U.S. population uh, and economy rapidly grew faster than New Spain and potentially threatening Spain's hold on Florida and Louisiana. Spoiler alert, well, they did lose Florida and Louisiana to the U.S. Spain combined the regulation of commerce, including the Mississippi River navigation, and a liberal immigration policy that sought to foster population growth in order to maintain their hold on their North American lands. They also joined Britain and Prussia in the alliance to reverse the uh, 1789 French Revolution, also known as the War of the First Coalition. And they unfortunately suffered uh, enormously under persistent and eventual successful uh, French invasions in Spain. Um, well, it didn't work out very well for them. Uh, this is actually a picture of the Battle of Valami uh, in Prussia. But... Overall, I guess you could say that it worked. In 1795, Spain actually conceded the Mississippi River navigation rights to the U.S. in hopes that it will ward off potential U.S.-British alliance in response to Spain's peace accords with France. Britain, of course, was still in, at war with uh, France for a while. And then immigration in the Mississippi River navigation only steadily increased the American population growth into the Spanish territories from the 1790s onwards. So they kind of had the reverse effect on there, but at least they did save off uh, war with Britain for a little bit, wine, uh, little bit longer. There was an Irish-born American trader named Philip Nolan. Here's his gravestone right there. Enterprisingly began catching and ranching Texan horses for Louisiana markets in a series of lengthy visits to Texas in the 1790s. And ultimately, uh, he provoked Spanish concerns about the spread of American influence in their North American colonies. Uh, Nolan and his men were detained in Texas for a little while. They were imprisoned in, imprisoned in Mexico, and many were actually executed uh, after defying commands to stay out of Texas. It was kind of a risky business. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this is it's likely uh, Spain's heavy response was a result of exaggerated fears of American expansion, while Nolan's intentions were a little more um, established. He, he basically just wanted to uh, establish commercial trade uh, with the Cados. Uh, he didn't necessarily want to uh, go ahead and take everything over. Now, under Napoleon's rise to power in France after 1799, the Spanish returned Louisiana to the French uh, in exchange for some lands in Tuscany. As you can see right here, this is almost to scale. Uh, we know it as the Louisiana Purchase. Uh, and see that little green dot. Point it out right there. That little green dot out there uh, is basically Tuscany. So the Spanish traded all of this for that. Um, yeah, it, it almost seems like kind of a, a bad trade deal. Um, within a few short years, Napoleon sold the territory to the United States, uh, mainly due to a lot of the failures in attempting to reestablish the French Empire uh, in America. He actually had uh, an idea of 
actual world domination. He wanted to uh, re-establish the French Empire, uh, and that kind of fell apart once they failed to retake uh, Haiti. The Spanish were not too happy with this. Um, they just actually disputed the territorial boundary boundaries with the Jefferson administration. Uh, Jefferson administration wanted to extend and maximize their claim to the land. They bought this. Uh, it was actually a mistake, kind of, or not a mistake, but kind of a serendipitous type of uh, movement on how they bought it. But they bought it, and they wanted to make sure that they held on as much as possible. Meanwhile, Spain is saying, no, 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 that's not what we actually sold. Jefferson then dispatched military expeditions, um, but American uh, expeditions up, up to the Red River were repelled by the Spanish. So we kind of got pushed back a little bit. Then we get the Neutral Ground Agreement. And that resolved a lot of tensions between the Spanish and the American military uh, and the commanders in Louisiana, between Natchitoches and Los Aires. And it resulted in a temporary zone of joint occupation that kind of came in an, an ungoverned buffer zone. Uh, sort of like a um, neutral zone in Star Trek, if you do watch Star Trek. Um, Westburn expeditions into the Louisiana Purchase, however, with uh, such famed people like Lewis and Clark, and as core of discovery, they extended American control into the West, while you get uh, the guy on the bottom right-hand here, side here, Zebulon Pike, and his mission to the Southern Rockies, again provoked Spanish authorities to detain and repel the American intrusion into the lanes that they understood to be part of their country, not Louisiana. So we don't necessarily start off on a good footing with the Spanish, and it kind of all goes downhill from there. Uh, to the point where we do eventually take Florida, we take Louisiana, we take Texas, New Mexico, uh, but I, the latter uh, come from the Mexican government. So that's all I have for this little mini lecture. Uh, stay tuned for a little bit later in the week for the next mini lecture.